Hey guys, TOGS here. As you may have seen on my previous videos, my current smartphone to date is the OnePlus One. This phone came out in 2014 and rocked great specs for a shockingly low price. Aside from the low price, what stood out to me was the way of advertising this phone, or maybe the lack thereof. OnePlus decided early that they wouldn't go advertising on billboards or through ads on websites. Rather, they would have the people to care create the hype for them. Once you wanted to get the phone though, you had to have an invite which allowed you to buy the phone. So eventually I got my hands on one and have been using it ever since. However, with the introduction of the newest generation of Snapdragon chipsets, I was curious. Could you get a cheaper smartphone with amazing specs, sort of what happened during the days of the OnePlus One? I've been using it for a couple of months now and I've been dying to do a video review of this device. So without any further ado, here is my blister round review of the Xiaomi Mi 5. First off, look, let's look at this phone shall we? We are rocking a 5.1 inch screen with glass on the front and the back. Now immediately this will set off a lot of people because of the glass back. I do realize that this means getting scratches on the device is really easy. And to be fair my unit already has some of those scratches. Luckily you can fix this up with the skin from slick wraps, but that means you'll lose the amazing glass touch. It might not be the prettiest thing to look at, but the feel in the hand is amazing. On the right side of the device you have access to the volume buttons on top. Beneath you have the power button. On the bottom of the device you have the USB-C connector for charging, as well as a down facing speaker. For me this wasn't a huge deal since I'm coming from the OnePlus One. Although I can imagine when you're used to having front facing speakers, like on the Nexus 6P for example, it's kind of hard to get used to. On the left you have access to the dual SIM adapter tray, which by the way is quite standard for Chinese smartphones these days. And on the top you have an IR blaster and a headphone jack. Pretty common stuff. Alright, now let's look at the specs you're getting for this device. It's rocking a Snapdragon 820 CPU, 3GB of RAM, 32, 64 or 128GB of storage depending on the model, 16 megapixels rear camera and 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. On the front you get a 4 megapixel front camera and a fingerprint sensor. These are pretty high specs considering the price point which I'll get to in a minute. So the overall impressions of this device are that it's a pretty solid contender. The build feels premium, the buttons have a tactile click to them and the screen is nice and vibrant, even under direct sunlight. Now I must say that in the terms of durance, I'm not that impressed with the device. A small drop on the floor caused the frame of the device to bend on in a corner, leaving the back of the device shattered and makes replacing the backplate a lot harder. That said, this is to be expected from a phone with a glass back. So if you're willing to pick this phone up, then you'll have to take extra good care of it. Just saying. Another point, although minor, is the software. This puppy rocks MyUI 8 out of the box. And this is a customized version of Android 6.1 with some handy features. Now, as you may or may not know, I am a huge stock Android fan. So as soon as I got the device, I rushed over to the XDA forums and got myself a custom ROM in the form of CyanogenMod 14.1. This means that the device is running Android 7.1 right now and I couldn't be happier about that. Now what rigs is a really sweet deal for me is the price. Right now, if you happen to be in China, you can get this phone for 260 euros. The caveat here being that if you're not in China, the method of getting this phone can be a little more tricky and may or may not end up in your favor. If I had to recommend a way of getting this phone online, I'd recommend AliExpress. They have a great payment option and the customer service is great as well. That said, there is no other option of getting the phone right now, so if you're not that fond of online shopping and you're not in China, you may be out of luck. So, is this phone a worthy competitor to say a Samsung Galaxy S7? Kind of? For the price it's really hard to argue with a device like this. However, considering the effort you have to make to get this phone to ship to your location, it might be a hassle and if you're not up for that, that's best that you look elsewhere. But I'm really curious to see what you guys think. And also what you think of the 4K upgrade you're doing right now. So please leave a comment under that like button and subscribe to stay up with more content like this. Thanks for watching, this is TOGS and I'll catch you guys in the next one.